Hi, I am Varun Joshi and welcome to day 5 of our Certified Kubernetes Administrator 2025 course. Today, we are going to learn about a powerful Docker feature called Docker Multistage Builds. This is a technique to build optimized Docker images by separating the build and runtime stages of an application. I'll repeat build and runtime stages of an application. So what are build and runtime stages? Firstly, let's understand this with an analogy. Imagine you are making a pizza. To make a pizza, you require some raw ingredients, measuring cup, a microwave and so on. These things are required to make the pizza, to build the pizza. But these things are not required to eat the pizza. Similarly, when we talk about an application, there are certain things that are required to build your application. But these things might not be required to run the application. Essentially, anything that is required to build the application should not be part of your Docker image because these things are not required to run your application. Ideally, your Docker image should only hold the things that are required to run the application. This is what Docker multi-stage builds do for you. They reduce the size of your image. And why are smaller images preferred? These are preferred because smaller images are easy to pull, easy to push, and easy to deploy. Secondly, since they are smaller, their attack surface is much lesser, which also makes them secure. Now, before we move forward, I want you to understand compiled languages and interpreted languages. I'll explain in some time why we are doing this. Compiled languages are the languages which require the source code to be translated into machine code for those applications to run. The process of this translation is called compilation and this process often requires certain tools and these tools are called build tools. The examples of compiled languages are Java, C, C++, Go and there are many more. On the other hand, there are interpreted languages. Interpreted languages do not require compilation. They have an interpreter which reads instructions line by line and they just require an interpreter no compilation required so the examples of interpreted languages are php python javascript and there are more the key difference i want you to take away is compiled languages typically require a build step involving compilers and other build tools on the other hand interpreted languages skip the build stage and rely on interpreter for execution now let's do one thing let's go to our visual studio code i'll go to day 5 directory day 5 has app.py code this is the same python code that we used in day 3 this is a simple python application that uses flask framework flask is a framework that is used to develop web applications in python and this python code just says hello docker and this application listens on port 5000 i am using the same docker file there will be few modifications that we'll make in this docker file the first statement is from which sets the base image for this docker file then work dir is slash app work dir is the working directory that my container will use add instruction is used to copy app.py into the container image then we have a run pip install pip is a package manager for python and in this command we are asking pip to install the flask framework we are using the expose statement for documentation purposes so that our admins and our developers will know that this application listens on port 5000 finally we are using the cmd instruction to run the application i would like to make few modifications in this docker file firstly i'll write 
it i'll use copy instruction instead of add why i am doing this is because i am just copying a simple file add is an instruction that can also download from urls and also copy archives files we don't need that functionality which is why it is recommended to use copy instruction to copy simple files here i am using cmd but as we discussed in our last lecture we'll find a way to use both entry point and cmd which is the recommended way so i'll use entry point to tell what executable this container must run and that executable for me is python and then the default command that would run would be app.py so entry point will be python and the cmd will be app.py once this is done i'll save this now like we discussed before python is an interpreted language hence this does not have a build stage there could be certain extension that complex python application might be using and those extension might require certain amount of building but our application is quite simple which is why we'll be installing some dummy build tools which are not required by our application per se but will help you understand how docker multi-stage builds help so i'll write few more commands i'll also run apt update at apt update is run to update all the indexes of our repositories so that we have the latest information about the latest versions and then i'll install apt install hyphen y for yes build essential a build essential is a package that will install tools that are required for c and c plus plus compiled languages as i said before we are just using this to explain a uh, docker multi-stage build i'll right click on day 5 and i'll open an integrated terminal here i'll run docker build hyphen t python image and i'll run this dot to supply that the current context can be used this build is taking some time and now run docker images i see that my python image has been created it is of 495 mb the size is this much because we have installed build essential i'll create another file here i'll call this docker file dot multi i'll open this to the right i'll close this and i'll also close this to have some more real estate then i'll copy this part i'll copy the work dir as well this too i'll copy this too i'll go to view and you word wrap here as well i'll word wrap it i'll add a comment here that this is stage one and stage one the name for stage one will be i'll write as and the name will be let's say build this can be anything so i'm calling this stage build this implies that this from statement anything under that will be called build stage i'll create another stage here i'll use the same from statement i'll call this stage i'll add a comment here stage 2 and you do not have to name this stage because this stage won't be referenced we are only creating docker multi-stage build that only has two stages you can have multiple stages as well in stage one we are building and stage two will be our final stage which is why we do not have to name stage two i've called this build state then i'll have these same things here i'll tell you what the difference will be here i'm saying copy from build stage app to app i'm saying copy from build stage whatever is in slash app and copy it to slash app since we already have work dir defined we can also just write a dot here here i'll in just install pip we do not need any build tools here because this is our final stage build tools were required in the build stage which is why we installed them here but this is our final stage let's call this final or production stage we do not require any build tools here so we will say copy this to 
dot then we'll run pip install flask and then finally we'll have the expose instruction and then we'll run our application i'll write docker build hyphen f docker file dot multi i am using hyphen f flag because i am using a custom docker file name which is docker file dot multi then i'll add a tag previous image was called python image so we'll call this python image multi and then we'll write a dot now this is building that image if i run docker images now i see that the recently created multi image is just of 162 mbs previously the image was of 495 mb this image is just of 162 mb because the multi-stage image does not have any build tools in the final stage let's run containers from each image so that we know that both of these images are essentially running our application but the image size of both the images are different i'll run docker run hyphen p i'll run the normal docker file image on port 8080 and i'll forward anything that comes to my mac machines or docker hosts port 8080 to port 5000 of this python application i'll run this in detached mode and i'll write python image here i'll run one one more container this container will listen on port 8081 and this will use python image multi i'll hit enter i'll go to my browser i'll write localhost port 8080 this also says hello docker and port 8081 should also say hello docker yeah same so in essence multi-stage builds allow us to optimize image size by separating build and runtime stages like we saw here this was our build stage and this was our runtime stage that's all for this lesson uh, that wraps up our introduction to docker great job everyone you have now got a solid foundation in docker in the next few lectures we'll be moving on to kubernetes we'll cover docker volumes and networking when we discuss how they are used within the kubernetes ecosystem if you have any questions feel free to ask them in the comment section if you have found my lecture useful consider liking sharing and subscribing it will mean a lot to me thank you very much